What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited for checking out Cthulhu Flux from Looney Labs. This is for two to six players, ages 13 plus, will take about 10 to 40 minutes to play. And in Cthulhu Flux, this is yet another iteration of Flux, where the rules are going to be constantly changing and getting crazy as you draw cards and play cards that will do a variety of different things. Now this one, though, has a Cthulhu theme and a couple new aspects introduced to the game. Does it rise above the rest of the flux or does it just walk along with the pack let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what's shooting inside of cthulhu flux so first and foremost we're a handy dandy rule sheet it's one really long page double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples it's very well done this is like their 10th 12th 15th version of flux so obviously they've fine-tuned the rules it does have a couple new quirks here ungoals surprise uh the new meta rule which i'll talk about in a little bit so in Flux and in Cthulhu Flux and all the different Fluxes, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to be the first person to complete a goal card that will be out on the center of the table. A gold card will be a pink-sided card like this, and it will tell you exactly what you need in order to win the game. So for this one, the player who has the Necro Minion and the Librarian on the table will win the game, so you'll be trying to get those cards in front of you. You'll get those cards in front of you by playing the green cards, which are called keeper cards. So a keeper card is a card that you will get in your hand, and then you will play it down in front of you, and then you will have a farm, which will hopefully help you complete a goal. For instance, boom. That, well, oh, that's not the farm. But as you can see, there will be different goals that you will have to accomplish. Now, it's not going to be that easy, though, because other people will be constantly replacing that goal with different goals to the center of the table. So you might have what you need to win the game, but if someone... Um, puts down a different goal card before you get a chance to put out all your keepers, well then you are in trouble. Now, let's go over how the game is played and we'll talk about the different cards in the deck. So the different cards in the deck, are there's going to be a couple different cards. We talked about gold cards already. We talked about keeper cards, which are the green cards. There are also creeper cards. These are bad cards. Whenever you get this card, you immediately place it down in front of you and they're really bad news. So for instance, we got Yog Sothith. You cannot win if you have have this in front of you unless conditions say otherwise. Now there are a few ways to remove these cards throughout the game, but another interesting aspect this game delivers is the fact that they have these little doom uh, symbols over here. Now if you're playing with what's called the meta rule, which I highly recommend playing with, whoever has the most doom cards right here, if no one wins the game, will be the winner. Now you might be saying, how can no one possibly win the game? Well, that's a great question to ask, because then I can show you the red cards, which are called ungoal cards. So we talked a little bit about goal cards, the pink ones, which will make you win the game. However, if someone is ever able to accomplish an ungoal card, then no one will win the game. Unless, of course, you're playing with the meta rules, which I'll talk about next. So for instance, the Call of Cthulhu, you play this card, place it face up at the center of the table. If the total doom count for the table is six or more and Cthulhu is in play, the game ends with no winner, Cthulhu wins. Now, that is not quite true because what you can decide at the beginning of the game is whether or not you want to play with the meta rule. If the game ends with no winner because of an ungoal, the player with the greatest number of doom points on the table wins. The Secret Cultist card Card trumps this and ensures victory in case of a tie the player with the most keepers or creepers mentioned on the ungoal wins I really do like the meta rule and I pretty much always play with this when I play with it but you might not so uh, mileage may vary kind of thing so we talked about the creepers we talked about the goals next we have the rules and this is really why flux is so popular is because the rules for the game are incredibly simple on your turn, you will draw one card and you will play one card. That's all you need to know. However, the game is constantly in a state of flux as people will always be playing new rule cards which will drastically change the game, especially as you get uh, ones that will have you drawing more cards and playing more cards or discarding cards, doing all sorts of crazy things. Another kind of card we're going to have are these purple cards. These are instant surprise cards. You can play these either on your turn or on someone else's turns as a reactionary card. Most of the time you'll probably play them uh, on someone else's turn, but you don't always have that choice. So those are the cards that you were, oh, last but not least we have action cards. You'll be able to play these on your turn. They will do all sorts of wildly delightful things, making people discard cards, taking other people's cards, drawing cards for you, all sorts of various different things. 
So let's give the game a shuffle and I'll show you how a mock hand would work. We do have the meta rule in effect, even though I don't think that's really gonna matter. But at the beginning of the game, everyone is going to have, oh my gosh, three cards. So since I have two creepers, I must immediately put these creepers down in front of me. Uh, I'm not gonna read all the text on these, just know that this would be a very poor start for me. So now, I also have a goal out here, which uh, obviously probably not gonna happen at the moment, but let's follow the rules. I draw one card and then I play one card and I can either play this goal or I can play this new rule. Now, let's show you a perfect example of why this game can get pretty crazy. I'm going to go ahead and put this new rule down. Play two cards per turn. If you have fewer than two cards in your hand, play all your cards. So now, I'm going to put this. So now everyone, instead of draw one, play one, now has draw one, play two. And since I have only played one card, this card, I now have to put this goal out here, which means I now have zero cards in my hand. So let's, let's go to the next player's turn. We are really hoping that they get, uh, oh my goodness, this is gonna be terrible. They have a hand limit of three, an action card and a goal, so let's see what their action card does. Search through the discard pile, take any action or investigator keeper card you wish and immediately play it. That's a really bad one to have right now. So this person would probably, well, draw one card and then play two, so they might change the goal. And then they might go ahead and do this new rule card. Ungoals and goals are no, long, no longer replace one another. There could be one ungoal and one goal in play at the same time. So now, uh, normally when we would put down an ungoal, it would replace this goal. But now we're going to be able to have a goal and an ungoal. So even more stuff going on. So as you can see, just after two turns, we already have new rules. We're going to have a goal and an ungoal going at the same time. Somebody's probably going to play something. Uh, he's, we're eventually going to have a hand limit size all sorts of craziness going on. So you're gonna to continue to play until someone is able to successfully achieve the goal or until someone achieves the end goal, at which point everybody loses or if you're doing the meta rule, not quite. But that in a nutshell is what you're gonna get inside of Cthulhu Flux. Alrighty then, Cthulhu Flux from Looney Labs. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, it's more Flux. And if you did not like any of the other versions of Flux, this one is not going to change your mind. Well, it does introduce some new concepts, which I really like. It's still more Flux with zany rules and constantly changing rules, which will be a turnoff to a lot of people. Also, the Cthulhu theme is going to be a turnoff to a lot of people. Some people are just sick and tired of Cthulhu. Now, with that being said, I do like the new additions that they added to the game that are Cthulhu related. And I don't even really like the Cthulhu mythos that much, but I'll talk more about that in the pros. Also, on the con side, I mean, the cards are still a little bit flimsier than you'd like to be. And the game can still drag on way too long, especially with more players. And you'll also get into some situations where one rule and another rule will work together to make the game not that fun, where it's like, oh, I'm going to draw three cards and I'm just guaranteed to play whatever those three cards are. So strategy just completely goes out the window. So in that aspect, the game is a good deal of uh, a luck-based game, which will turn some people off. I mean, it's Flux. You either know or you don't know if you like Flux for the most part. If you've never played Flux, then I highly suggest that you do try out Flux to see if it's for you because it's a very different experience. Moving on to the pros, Flux was one of the first games I played when I got into the hobby. I tried Zombie Flux and I was like, what in the world? We're constantly changing the rules and the game from point A to point B to point Q is going to be a little bit different as the rules are changing and it still does that, and I still enjoy that, and I really did enjoy this game. Now, that being said, since I'm not just a collector, I still like Batman Flux better than this and Holiday Flux better than this just because of the theme, but I do like the unrules, uh, uh, excuse me, the ungoals, and I do like the meta rule, and I like those a lot better. I wish those were in those other versions of Flux, but still, I feel like the theme is going to make me keep those versions of the game over this version of the game. But that being said, this is one of the best versions of Flux that I have played. I really enjoyed the ungoals and the creepers and how they all have the doom tokens on them. And you can win. It gives you alternate win conditions, which I am a huge fan of. Um, in the end, it's really simple. If you're in the market for a game of Flux and you like Cthulhu and you want a little bit more out of your Flux experience than your typical Flux, then Cthulhu Flux is a great one. And honestly, this might be the best Flux that I have played gameplay-wise. So if the theme does turn you on, Cthulhu Flux is an easy recommendation. But that being said, 
If you don't like Flux, this is not one I can recommend to you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know what's your favorite version of Flux. For me personally, Batman Flux, Holiday Flux, it's a toss-up. I'd say as it gets closer to September, October, November, I go Holiday Flux. The rest of the year, it's Batman Flux. But let me know in the comments below. What's your Flux? Let me know, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.